so from this video we will going to discuss about five mode of action of different antibacterial agent acting on different part of the bacteria so today first we will going to discuss about two things one is dna synthesis inhibitors and rna synthesis inhibitor then we will going to see one by one cell wall synthesis inhibitor cell membrane synthesis inhibitor protein synthesis inhibitor okay and after the completion of that antibacterial agents we will talk about also two anti fungal agent one is crisofulbin another one is amphotericin b then we will discuss about the concept concept of bacterial resistant and there we will going to see about multi drug resistant extremely drug since it drug resistant and our mrsa that is methicillin resistant staphylococcal aureus followed by ndm1 so stay tuned so this lecture series is all about various kind of antibiotics okay so let's let's start about the first our discussion regarding dna rna synthesis inhibitor so antibiotics means what antibiotics means it is synthesized by bacteria okay to either inhibit or to destroy the growth of the bacteria or the bacteria itself that means it is a competition mechanism evolved by bacteria suppose this is the bacteria x it is synthesizing a kind of substance that we call antibiotic because it have the ability to either negatively regulate its metabolism or causing death of the bacteria y okay so it is evolved by bacteria so that they can survive in the environment because it is all about who and what amount get nutrients right that means x bacteria will secret antibiotic so that y bacteria either reduces its metabolism or it becomes died okay so that all the nutrients that is available in the medium will be acquired by the bacteria x okay that is why bacteria secretes antibiotic that is a competition mechanism and we will going to use those kind of antibiotics to treat various kind of infection okay so obviously bacterial infection so those kind of antibiotic have various type of activity some of them will target the dna rna some of them will target the cell wall some of them will target cell membrane and some of them will target the protein that is the five kind of things that can happen so today we will going to discuss about first two thing that is the antibiotics secret, uh, secreted by bacteria various kind of bacteria that targets mainly dna and rna synthesis okay so now so this is the cell membrane okay and this is our dna and from dna with the help of our dna dependent rna polymerase mrna is getting synthesized and from the mrna these red things are ribosome facilitates protein synthesis okay so the first drug that we will going to discuss about is the fluoroquinolone okay so this fluoroquinolone is affects this enzyme so who is this so this enzyme is topo iso marase so who is the staff topo iso marase is so to understand how fluoroquinolone affects topo iso marase it is important to understand about how topo iso marase work before so during dna replication i hope you know that there is a formation of replication fork okay and this replication fork facilitates the formation of super coiling in the downstream okay so that is the idea it facilitates the super coiling now mind this very carefully 
सो दिस टोपो आइसोमार इज हैव टू काइंड ऑफ एक्टिविटी वन इज काटिंग डोमेन एंड अदार वन इज जयनिंग और बैंडिंग डोमेन सो फार्ष्ट अफ अल दैट टोपो आइसोमार इज उल एक्टिवेट इट्स काटिंग डोमेन दिस काटिंग डोमेन उल काट अल साम अफ द फसफोडायस्ट्रा बन एंड एलाउ द डी एन ए to get rid of some of the stress or some of the tension created at the supercoiled region okay so once this tension or cuts tensions or stress will be removed its binding or joining domain will be activated and it will recreate the phosphodiester bond okay which will again convert the fully sealed double stranded dna okay so that is how topo isomerase works in reducing the supercoiling okay for now it is important to know about topo isomerase how topo isomerase works so that you can easily understand how fluoroquinolone works so fluoroquinolone both positively and negatively affect the topo isomerase let's see how so fluoroquinolone first positively affect the okay the cutting domain of the topo isomerase and as a result what will happen the topo isomerase keep continuing its cutting process and as a result various amount of phosphodiester bond will be cut on the other hand it also neg it also negatively affects its joining domain and as a result what will happen try to imagine that as the cutting domain is become upregulated it continues the cutting of the phosphodiester bond but there is no one to rejoin them and as a result it will facilitate what i am writing dna fragmenting okay and now just think about this that if your dna gets fragmented can you survive no similarly if the bacterial dna gets fragmented bacteria cannot survive okay so that is how fluoroquinolone works so we can use fluoroquinolone for both gram uh, gram negative bacteria we can use fluoroquinolone mainly gram negative bacteria but there are some gram positive coverage okay but mainly we are using fluoroquinolone for gram negative bacteria okay so various kind of treatments like pyelomyelitis sorry for that okay so fluoroquinolone is a bacteriocidial if a, a, a the drug so what is the meaning of the bacteriocidial drug try to understand this first so fluoroquinolone is a bacteriocidial drug which ensures the death of the bacteria because at the very first opening of the video i have told you that antibiotic has two activity any kind of antibiotic have either one of that two activity okay so either it ensures the death of the organism or it slow down or inhibit its metabolism okay so those kind of back antibiotics which ensures the death of the organism are called bacteriocidial okay and on the other hand those kind of antibiotic which simply reduces the metabolism are called bacteriostatic okay so here fluoroquinolone by ensuring the fragmentation of the dna facilitates what the death of the bacteria right so it is an example of bacteriocidial antibiotic okay for example pyelonephritis osteomyelitis and prostatitis infection can be treated with the help of fluoroquinolone okay so now it's time to learn some of their examples okay so the first one is i want to told you levofloxacin ufloxacin and ciprofloxacin okay so that was all about fluoroquinolone so one more time try to re uh, recapitulate this that fluoroquinolone inhibits or i should say both positively and negatively affect topo isomerase 
ओके फ्लोरोकुइलन शोज पजिटिव एक्टिविटी टावर्ड्स द काटिंग डोमेन अब द टोपो आइसोमारेस उच इनक्रिजेस द काटिंग अब द फसफोडायस्टर बंड बाट इट अल्सो नेगेटिवली एफेक्ट द जयनींग और बैंडिंग डोमेन उच फैसिलिटेड वार्डस उच फैसिलिटेड डीएनए फैगमेंटेशन सो इट इज मेनलीफेक्टे यूजफुल इन एगेंस्ट ग्राम नेगेटिव बैक्टेरिया बाट इट इज अल्सो एप्लीकेबल फर ग्राम पजिटिव बैक्टेरिया टू बाट नट All we can mainly use gram against again we can mainly use fluoroquinolone for gram negative bacteria only friends okay and it is again I am wanting to explain that it is a bacteria CDL drug and it treats prostatitis, pyelonephritis and osteomyelitis kind of infection okay when they are caused by bacteria okay. So now I think it is clear to you how fluoroquinolone works. Now let's come to another drug that is metronidazole. Okay, this one. So this metronidazole will first interact with nitroreductase. Okay, this is an enzyme already present inside the cell. Okay, this nitroreductase will convert or will facilitate the conversion of metronidazole into active metabolite. Okay, so this active metabolite will causes the disruption of the normal helical structure. Okay, and which facilitates DNA fragmentation by DNA. Now I want to clear another important concept that is when DNA enzyme as its name suggests it will do what? It will digest DNA, right? So now, when DNA will face something like this one that I have drawn here, that is a double stranded DNA molecule, it cannot show its activity. Okay, but, but, if it gets something like that, sorry, now, if it gets something like that, under such circumstances, DNA can show its activity and causes the fragmentation of the single stranded DNA molecule. Okay, that's how metronidazole works. That means metronidazole disrupts the normal double stranded helical structure and facilitates or make the DNA susceptible to DNA. And as a result, DNA gets fragmented. Okay, that means I should say it is again kind of bacterial serial, right? So, we can use metronidazole for growth both gram negative and gram positive bacteria. For example, let's say bacterial vaginosis infection or helicobacter pylori that is responsible for gastric ulcer or duodenal ulcer infection is also treated by metronidazole. But metronidazole is predominantly used for anti protozoal treatment. Anti protozoal treatment means it is used to treatment amoebiosis kind of disease caused by Entamoeba histolytica or giardiasis kind of disease caused by giardia lamblia. Okay, so that was all about metronidazole. So we have completed two drugs one more time. First one, fluoroquinolone. This fluoroquinolone will both positively and negatively affect the topo isomerase. Okay. It will positively affect the cutting domain of the topo isomerase and it will negatively affect the joining or binding domain of the topo isomerase, okay, which facilitates DNA fragmenting, okay, and it is applicable for both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Mind this very carefully, okay. Now, it is useful for pyelonephritis and. osteomyelitis and prostitis okay and it is an example of bacterial serial drug and we have also talked about metronidazole right so metronidazole will bind with the nitroreductase this nitroreductase will convert metronidazole into an active metabolite which have the ability to cause the disruption of the normal helical structure okay and as a result the dna becomes susceptible to dns and which facilitates the fragmentation of the dna Okay, mainly useful for bacterial vaginosis, helicobacterial pyloric kind infection. Okay, mainly useful for gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria both. Okay, now drug number three that is nitrofurantoin. 
okay this nitrofurantoin toin will bind with the nitrofurantoin reductase an enzyme which is already present inside the cell so this nitrofurantoin reductase will causes the conversion of the nitrofurantoin toin into a reactive intermediate which is kind of like reactive oxygen species okay this reactive oxygen intermediate will both positively sorry both negatively affect or inhibit the dna synthesis as well as rna synthesis as well as later protein synthesis okay so this is the work of nitrofurantoin okay i hope it is clear to you now we are using nitrofurantoin for again both gram positive and gram negative bacterial infection okay and as it stops the synthesis of the dna rna and protein so 100% it is bacteriocidial no doubt about this and it causes uti infection you know or sorry it uh, it treats uti infection caused by various kind of bacteria for example e coli enterococci okay so one more time nitrofuran nitrofuran will bind with the nitrofuran reductase already present inside the cell this nitrofuran reductase will facilitate conversion of the nitrofuran into reactive intermediate which is kind of reactive oxygen species will which will stop the dna rna as well as protein synthesis okay clear now it causes uti infection such as e coli enterococci applicable for both gram positive and gram negative bacteria okay now drug number 4 that is daptomycin so daptomycin is a newer antibiotic and its activity is quite interesting it will create a pore in both the cell membrane and cell wall if cell wall is present then it will also create a pore here okay so now by creating pore is facilitated quick and subsequent depolarization because remember uh, let's try to think about this that if there is a pore in the cell wall or if there is a big gap in the cell wall it causes the leakage of ions both from inside to outside or both from outside to inside and which causes a subsequent depolarization okay and it facilitate the inner charge of the membrane to become predominantly positive okay and this relative positive charge inside the membrane causes inhibition of the dna rna and protein synthesis okay so one more time what is going on so d our uh, daptomycin causes or creates a pore in the cell wall and if cell membrane uh, and cell wall both is present then it will create the pore in both the cases or if only cell membrane present then only cell membrane so this pore causes leakage in or leaking out of various kind of ion okay and which facilitate rapid and and very fast depolarization okay and in simpler words it causes or it makes the inner charge of the inner side of the membrane predominantly positive and as a result this predominant positive charge in the inner side of the membrane causes inhibition of the dna rna and protein synthesis okay and it is mainly useful for gram positive bacteria for example staphylococcal aureus and last drug i want to discuss with you is the very common rifampicin okay so the idea of rifampicin is it will inhibit the dna dependent rna polymerase and prevent rna synthesis that means it is a hardcore rna synthesis inhibitor okay and it is useful for tuberculosis leprosy and hemophilus influenza type b type infection treatment okay so now we have first discussed about the fluoroquinolones okay so this fluoroquinolone is positively and negatively affects the two domain of the topo isomerase so it positively affects the cutting domain of the topo isomerase and negatively affect the joining domain of the topo isomerase and which facilitates the dna fragmenting okay it is useful for pyelonephritis prostatitis osteomyelitis and it is applicable for mainly gram negative bacteria along with some gram positive coverages 
okay and remember if we are willing to target gram negative bacteria so we are targeting type 2 topoisomerase and if we are willing to target gram positive bacteria in that case we are targeting type 4 topoisomerase this is the thing now after that it will bind with the metronidazole this metronidazole will bind then now sorry now we will going to discuss about metronidazole so this metronidazole will bind with the nitroreductase which causes the conversion of metronidazole into active metabolite okay and this active metabolite causes disruption of the double helical structure okay and which facilitate fragmentation of the dna by dna's enzyme okay that means kind of bacteriocidal activity isn't it so we can use metronidazole for both gram positive gram negative bacteria especially for ulcer treatment by caused by hemophilus uh, sorry alpha ulcer treatment caused by helicobacter pylori along with we can also use this metronidazole guy for various kind of protozoal infection you know for example we can use this one for entamoeba histolytica GR, grd lamblia type infections okay or the infection caused by them or also we can use metronidazole for bacterial vaginosis treatment okay so now we will discuss about the nitronidazole so, uh, sorry we will discuss about the nitrofuran so this nitrofuran will bind with the nitrofuran reductase and this nitrofuran reductase causes the conversion of the nitrofuran into a reactive intermediate this reactive intermediate will inhibit both dna rna and protein synthesis okay so now this nitrofuran example of nitrofuran is very important uh, uh, that means i want to mean that what kind of infection can be prevented or can be treated by nitrofuran so nitrofuran is useful for both gram positive and gram negative bacteria prevention and it is mainly useful for UTI infection treatment caused by E. coli, e. coli and enterococci. Okay. So after nitrofuran, we have discussed about daptomycin. This daptomycin creates pores in the cell wall as well as cell membrane and which facilitates a quick and subsequent depolar depolarization in the inside of the membrane. Okay. And as a result this positive charge inhibiting the dna rna and protein synthesis okay so we are uh, using daptomycin for gram positive bacteria mainly staphylococcus aureus type infection okay so after daptomycin uh, we will uh, go to discuss about another important drug that is rifampicin so rifampicin is mainly a hardcore RNA dependent, DNA dependent RNA polymerase inhibitor that means it prevents the RNA synthesis okay so it can be useful for tuberculosis treatment leprosy treatment and hemophilus influenza type B treatment okay so that was the five type of antibiotic that you need to know from DNA RNA synthesis inhibitor first one is fluoroquinolone which affecting the topo isomerase okay and useful for mainly gram negative bacteria where we are targeting type 2 topo isomerase right and then we uh, another important one is our metronidazole so metronidazole will convert itself with the help of nitro reductase into active metabolite which causes the disruption of the helical uh, structure and which will be degraded by dna enzyme after that okay and useful for both gram positive and gram negative bacteria and mainly for protozoal infection okay now we have discussed about daptomycin so this daptomycin create pores and causes the depolarization which facilitates the inhibition of the dna rna and protein synthesis okay and the another one is nitrofuran this nitrofuran causes its conversion into reactive intermediate which inhibits dna protein rna synthesis and the last one is our rifampicin this rifampicin in will inhibiting us uh, this rifampicin will inhibits the rna dependent 
sorry dna dependent allele polymerase because on the basis of using dna our rna polymerase converts them into rna right so dna dependent rna polymerase inhibitor is our rifampicin okay and another important thing i want to mention you that this daptomycin only inhibits dna and rna okay on the other hand our nitrofurin inhibits both the dna rna and protein okay so that's all that is all about also uh, sometimes daptomycin also inhibit protein so you can remember about both the thing are same that daptomycin dna rna protein synthesis inhibitor and nitrofurin the nitrofurin our dna rna and protein synthesis inhibitor okay so that's all for dna rna synthesis inhibitor part so i hope this video is very clear to you and you have learned about each and every mechanism that i have mentioned here and i would also like to inform you that i have learned this chapter from ninja nut science this is also a very prominent and very popular youtube channel in the education field so i have learned this topic from that channel so you can also visit this to learn about antibiotics in details okay so thank you for listening to this friends and i hope this video will be helpful to you and thank you for listening to this class